Hi, my name is Tlaibar Ahmed. I'm 12 years old and I'm going to be grade 7 next year. I love reading and I lo really love books. This is my favorite series right here. The titles of my books are The Eye of Minds, The Rule of Thoughts, and The Game of Lives. The author of these books is named James Dashner. He is also the author of the Maze Runner series. You may have heard of the movies. You may know the Maze Runner series is actually a very good story. Well, the Mortality Doctrine series is no exception, actually. This is the exact same kind of immersive world that you could get from James Dashner. Truly a great author. The type of this book is science fiction, and the genre is action with a little bit of comedy. It's actually a pretty good mix for a good book like this. The main characters are Michael, Sarah, and Bryson. Michael is more of that guy you could find at nervous prom dates or whatever you could see in school, that quiet guy at school classes. And pretty much the, fun the most funniest in the entire book series. Um, Sarah is more of that kind of girl that will roll her eyes at everything a boy says. And she's pretty sarcastic too, but do not question her loyalty. Bryson is more of that kind of nervous football guy kind of type. The characters, well, Bryson and Michael were best friends from the start. So it's not clear how they actually met, it's not mentioned. Sarah and Michael actually met in real life because this book series is based off a virtual reality called the Vertnet. And you can access the Vertnet through a kind of technological looking kind of coffin. And when you enter it, it's called the Sleep. So Michael and Sarah met on a series of adventures that Cain, the antagonist, sent them through. And then later, Michael was sent into real life to find Sarah and Bryson. This virtual reality world is actually kind of unique. I've never seen anything like it. You can travel to it through something called the coffin that I've mentioned earlier. Um, once you get in there, you can actually, it's actually pretty much the same as real life, except you can move around because your mind is immersed in there. Your mind can control your body in there. It's not, it's kind of like the Oculus gear that we have in real life except your mind literally travels to a different world. You can't feel yourself in real life anymore. And there's something called the core programmed in your head that can separate your real mind from your virtual mind. So if you die in the game, uh, you're gonna be fine in real life. You're just gonna respawn right back. There is only one virtual reality and one real world. I prefer the real world because many things could go wrong in the virtual reality. One wrong hack and everyone's cores could get deprogrammed and everyone dies. If I could travel to virtual reality, I would probably be Sarah. I like her character the most and her personality. I'm pretty sure she fits me the most. There are 308 pages in the first book, 325 pages in the second book, and 336 pages in the third book. It took me around a week to, or so to read all of these books. I spend about five hours a day reading. I enjoyed reading these books because James Dashner is honestly a really good author and I loved how he described every single scene and scenario. It's almost as if I were the main character going through the adventure myself. I could not expect anything better from James Dashner. Um, one, fun, one nice scene that I liked was that Michael turned out to actually be a tangent, which is uh, another name for a sentient robot, computer programmed sentient robot. And he finds this out when Kane sends him uh, through his program uh, uh, plan called the Mortality Doctrine which is also the name of the book series. And through that programming series, he actually turns into a real life human 
by taking over a body called Jackson Porter. So it's pretty nice, the plot twist. Did I mention the plot twist will leave you mind blown? Every single time you read a plot twist, like you just turn the page and there's one turn there that you could have never expected. Another thing I like about these books is that so many clues are left at the beginning for what's going to happen in the end, but you just don't see it coming until you read the end. Then you're like, oh, wait, there are clues in the beginning that lead up to this point. It's just really nice how the whole story adds up to lead to one point. For example, another thing I like is that there's this one, there are worlds in the Vertnet. Um, and when, the more you level up in the ranks, the more you're able to access these worlds. And the top level world is called Lifeblood. Um, Michael's, Michael's dream as a hacker in this Vertnet world has always been trying to get to Lifeblood. When in the beginning, since he's a tangent or a computer programmed robot, he has always been living in lifeblood. So it's, I love how in the beginning, it's left clues. Like for example, there's this billboard at one t point, there's a scene where he gets up and he looks out the window and there's this billboard which says lifeblood. And M Michael thinks it's an advertisement for lifeblood. But honestly, it was just the billboard mentioning the location of where he was. Which is actually a pretty nice clue to lead up to where we are now. To level up in this series, it's pretty simple. You, had, you just have to be guides, you have to complete challenges in other worlds. And there are these games, for example, most of you probably have heard of Call of Duty. There is one game like that where it's a battlefield. Um, the more you win, the more you earn points. Um, also, if you do something wrong, for example, in the first, as soon as you open this book, the first book, we see Michael trying to stop a little, a little girl. I'm not sure if she's little, but her avatar was mentioned as a little girl. Um, this girl was trying to jump off a bridge and he, Michael was trying to stop her, otherwise he would lose his points. So that's another way to lose your points. You just have, you just have to do things good in this series. My favorite quote is actually from the second book on page 139. Let me just open that up quickly. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. I've met some brave people in my life and I've met some awfully stupid people. You're one of the rare ones that are both. In a strange way, I learned how to be loyal and how to always be wary of those I didn't trust. For example, here's a few scenes to support both. In the third book, near the end somewhere, there's these series of trials that you have to get through to get to a location called the Hollowed Ravine, which will take you to the antagonist. And through these trials, there are uh, kind of like rooms, for example, you have to survive paths of lava or you have to tiptoe quietly through rooms that have creatures sleeping above you and if you wake them up, they will tear you apart. Um, at one point, Michael was about to fall into the lava, but Sarah pulled him back and pushed herself in instead, so Michael was able to survive and get to the end. This is actually a really nice uh, show of loyalty. How Sarah was very loyal to Michael and instead of surviving on her own, she took her, she took her own life. Not really, this is the Vertnet. But you get what I mean. And Michael was able to survive and get to the end. For the not able to trust, here's something. There is something in the Vertnet called the VHS or more the virtual network security. So, this virtual network security is like your average government. They just keep everything safe, you think they're the good guys, that kind of thing. So, Michael was appointed by them because the VHS know that it takes a hacker to defeat a hacker. And Kane and Michael are both hackers. 
So they recruited Michael to try and help them, but it turns out they weren't the good guys at all. They were always the bad guys. And this one person, probably the leader of VHS, called Agent Weber, um, never had good plans in mind. She always wanted to destroy the Vertnet and take over the real life world too. Um, and turns out Kane, who was in the first bo few books, probably the second one as well, who was supposed to turn out as an enemy, turned out to be an ally and they had to defeat the VHS, which is goes to show that you should never trust someone that you don't fully know. I recommend these books to others because, let me say a few things. James Dashner is honestly a great author. He's also the author of the Maze Runner series, and we, most of us know, probably, from the movies of the Maze Runner, that it was a really good story. The storyline was just perfect. And I could not expect anything more from James Dashner. This series leaves plot twists on every single page. Characters are really well made and it leaves no personality out. Every personality ever in the world is included in this book. And the kind of plot twist with the protagonist and the antagonists, how suddenly the villain turns out to be the ally and the ally turns out to be the villain is just such a nice twist of your uh, normal, your average, oh, I'm a villain, and I'm gonna stay a villain throughout this whole series. But then I turn out to be a good guy in the end because the protagonists make me a good guy. Now it's time for our reading tip number one. Find your base rate for reading. Reading speed or words per minute. In order to manage something, you need to be able to measure it. How to do it? Grab a book and a pencil. Mark your starting point and read for exactly 60 seconds. When the time is up, mark your end point. Count the number of lines you have read in 60 seconds. If you want to know the words per minute, all you need to do is count the number of words per line. If you want to know the number of words per minute, all you need to do is count the average amount of words per lines. Most books have an average of 10 words per line. Now let's multiply 10 words by 20 lines, which will give us 200 words per minute. Most people have an average reading speed of 200 to 300 words per minute. It's just great if your reading speed is higher than that. You're a real reading superhero. But don't worry if your reading speed is lower, because there are a few obstacles that will make you slow down. And we'll tell you what those obstacles are and how to overcome them in our next episodes. Stay tuned, read fast, read smart, love books.